How's that? Can they see us? I think so. Are we on? Well, looks like we got our mic a little bit in the camera. We'll fix that. <clears throat> um, we should be good and loud. Let me check the gain level over here. Oh, well, we got to mute it over here. Hey, Robbie. Big Rob. All right, well, here we are. Uh, people are still coming in. We've got a couple of minutes. We just wanted to have a little bit of time to say hey to everybody and chit chat. That's right. We're not supposed to start till 7, but we thought if we started early, we could tell jokes and things. Right, yeah. Have a little <laughs> comedy. Um, the, uh, good deal. The video, you want to show that? Yep, all right. So here's you got, I'll, you got the I'm a, I'm in control of this. So I'll show you what I want to show you. We've been talking about how to mess up doing live stream. Yeah. And there is actually a priest. There's a lot of ways to do it. There's a lot of ways to do it. I've already ex explored some of those myself already, but here's a priest who took it to another level. <laughs> this is funny. So this is a priest performing a, a mass ceremony. It's a mass. In it's, he's in Italy. Catholic. Yeah. Catholic priest. He's in Italy. Um, you gotta watch the settings on your phone when you do a mass. So let, you'll see what I mean. Title. I have a concern. Yeah, it's showing meters. All right. Hopefully you can hear the audio. All right. He doesn't know what he's doing here. <laughs> I can't not laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite one. Oh no! We didn't do split screen. Oh no! Do it again. I, I'm doing it. it again. I'm doing it again. Oh, that's so embarrassing. We, we were go. mocking somebody for messing it up, and now, then we mess it up. Now you should see it. Now we have to fake laugh again. I, I laugh every time. This will be real laughing. Okay. This will be real laughing again. Buonasera. Ci ritroviamo insieme per pregare. Io in chiesa e voi a casa. Alright, here comes my favorite snack. Oggi è venerdì di Maresima e vogliamo pregare con la mia Lucis e la benedizione di Luca that is what we're going to not do today, hopefully. We're not going to turn the, the filters Do you on. know what is poetic justice? Is we were trying to make some fun of somebody for not streaming <laughs> right. And we, and didn't, we didn't do it right. right. That's, that, what, that's what we get. Do you know what Alanis Morissette was saying? A isn't, little too ironic. Isn't it don't ironic? You think? Isn't it ironic? All right. All, all right. right. 30, Who's on with 33 us? 33 people rolling up in here. Mr. Greg and Miss Denise and Kathy. Hey, guys. Hey, Mike and Sue. We decided just to start a minute early because we miss everybody. Hi, Miss Wanda Sue. All right. I guess it isn't a minute early anymore, though. It is 7 o'clock. About time to start. Uh, let's see. Where did I do? What is this? <laughs> I got some things that we got to do on the front end here before we get. You got no music yet. Okay. I'm joking. I mean, not I'm really. Just I'm not. the guitar. Um, we got some, first off, we already said welcome, glad you're here. I need to say a couple things about announcements. Kids camp, I was supposed to get the numbers in by Sunday, but obviously it's, it's passing. I've got some preliminary numbers, but because of the virus, I've given everybody an extra week to, to get to me. Um, several of you have emailed me this week. Thank you for that. If you want your children who are going into first grade through going into fifth grade, if you want them to go to kids camp with us, you need to get in touch with me by text message or email or something. Hopefully I've gotten in touch with everybody that wants to go, but I'm just assuming there's some people who I haven't. Uh, there's some people who I, I probably just haven't included you in the email, but if you see this and you want your kids to go, just call me or text me or something so we can get you on that list. Um, and then there's another announcement that I've actually probably had, I don't know, five or six people ask me, how do we do online giving? for Rayford Road, because obviously we're not here. Um, it, right, Christians tithe, Christians give their money, and we know that we need to do that, but we don't always know how to do that in something like this. So let's show split you screen. split screen, there we go. and we'll get off of the priest mistake, and I'm <laughs> gonna go to www. 
Rayford Road. Did I misspell road? Put a C in there. Dot org. Whoa. Good grief. This is embarrassing. <laughs> is oh, it, you still got a C in there. Is there no, is it not church? Dot, dot org. I thought it was dot org. It's mm-hmm. Rayford Road Church dot org, isn't it? Rayford Road Church dot org, yeah. What are we thinking? Hey, Elizabeth. Hey, Hunters. Hey, Mr. Jim. All right. Rayford Road Church dot org. And if you get to RayfordRoadChurch.org, you will see a giant red screen that says Coronavirus Update. Don't let it, it scare you. It just scrolls through. There's like three or four different pictures that kind of scroll through. And this is what our website looks like. Hopefully you've already seen it before. And what you'll need to do is find, there's three little buttons. And I don't know how easy it is to see my mouse, but on the top bar, it's a green bar. And you'll see the words that say, join us this Sunday. And to the left of those words are three little lines. And those lines, if you click them, will bring down this drop-down menu. And this drop-down menu, let me say one other thing here. I don't know if you've noticed this. On the bottom, there's a live stream. You can get live stream through Facebook, through YouTube, or you can watch it right here on the website. So there's always three ways to do live stream. Um, I'm not 100% sure that what we're doing tonight does to the website. I don't think it does. So that's just your normal services, but Wednesday nights, just use YouTube and Facebook. But anyway, what we're talking about is giving. So there's actually one that's the third one down that says giving. And if you click on that, it's going to bring up a new window that says tithes and offerings. You can give now. And that's the easiest thing to do is you just put how much money you want in. You can give a comment if it needs to go to a certain place. Like if you want to do, uh, a, a building fund or a camp donation. Like, let's say you want, you need to pay for kids camp. You can put that in the comment and we'll know that. Um, if you give on this first page, I be, I'm pretty sure it's going to be an anonymous gift. So what you'll want to do is go to click into sign in and sign in. You can set up an account and that'll just make sure we have your name and stuff. And that will help us for keeping records of uh, who gave and how much they, they gave and all that's for tax purposes. So this is the easy way to do t- uh, giving. There's other ways to do it. Uh, I think Pastor Johnny mentioned that he does it through his bank, which is actually what I do as well. I don't actually use this. I do, my bank sends it. But that's probably, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Just so you know, we don't run this giving site. It's run by a company called ShareFaith, and then they're partnering with another company that does all the data protection. And so it's very highly encrypted they say it's not it's very very secure uh, but it's not something that we we're just using a third party to run all of this and so if you if you use a tithe it'll tell you how much of your uh, payment will go to cover the fee of using that and it's usually like I can't remember what the percentage is like one or two percent I can't remember but it'll tell you all of that as you go in to give your tithes and offerings but that's it that's how it works awesome very simple yeah, fairly simple. Um, all right, let's see. YouTube isn't working for us tonight. I'm sure it's our error. It's probably well, not your error. Let me see. We've already made some errors tonight. It's showing us it's supposed to be on for us. Yeah. I don't know why it's not working. I don't know why it's not working. And I don't think that we can... Place the video in Dropbox for how to give online. Oh, just got a message. There's a video in Dropbox for how to give online. We'll try to find it and post it we'll later. Get, yeah, we'll get that posted soon. Um, sorry if YouTube's not working. I don't know why, but what we can do is this will be saved, and so we can we can put it on YouTube. It just won't be live. Um, right. So if we can't figure out how to make it work now, we'll get this on YouTube when this whole thing is done. Uh, that's that's it for announcements. Can you think of any other announcements? I don't think so. Before we do music, let's talk about prayer requests. I have five things here that I want to mention. We'll split them. We'll go okay. every other one. Or you can just pick one and I'll do another. Sure. Um, the first one up, and um, I made mention of this last night um, on my my own little uh, stream, that um, Connie Sweat's daughter, Heather, um, had, had gone to uh, Mayo with some chest pains and they found out that um, they had gotten some good news that that, that was um, 
uh, that it was really it was a um, an irregular heartbeat that she was that she was dealing with. Um, and she's back she's back home now, and um, that that situation um, is 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 going pretty good right now from what from what I hear. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, but continue to to keep to keep them in your prayers. Good. Um, I'm gonna I'll mention. Miss Mary Ann Ray's mom. I actually just got off the phone with Cindy uh, right before we started, Cindy Ray. Um, basically, Mary Ann's mom is in St. Catharines, which is the retirement facility that's connected to, or the, um, I guess it's assisted living. I'm not exactly sure how they label it, but it's connected with St. Vincent's. They weren't able to bring her up here because of the coronavirus, so she's staying down there. Uh, her health, Cindy says, has improved a lot, that she's doing great, uh, but it's just hard because, as you know, they're not letting anybody visit, and so the only way to communicate is through the phone, and, uh, and that's been really difficult and just emotionally hard. So uh, I think it's especially uh, for Miss Mary Ann, I think, I think that's hard on her, and I just want to ask us, in just a minute, we'll pray for her. Uh, they, they know that this is helping her health-wise and, and helping her... It's a necessary thing, but it doesn't mean it's an easy thing. And so um, we're, we're thankful that it's there, uh, but also we just want to pray for Miss Mary Ann and Cindy and Brian because it's not it's not fun. It's hard, right. uh, and so we'll be we'll be praying for that. Right. Uh, also remember Margaret Stokes. That's uh, Miss Debbie Graves' mom. Um, she was she had a, a ER visit. I believe it was yesterday, and. Um, th- she had a really high blood pressure. They were able to get her, her blood pressure down, though, and we're thankful for that. Uh, we'll just pray that it continues to stay down and um, believe they adjusted her, med- her medications and, and, and things like that. But, um, right. So we're glad for that, for that good news, but continue to remember them in prayer. That's right. Um, called Gary Poole today and spoke with him about, uh, as you all know, he, he went to St. Vincent's. I believe it was St. Vincent's uh, because of... There was bacteria in his leg and cramping and swelling there. He says that he's basically not in very much pain anymore. He's still ordered to be in rest and keep his legs up. And he said that it's probably the hardest thing for him right now will be staying still. But he's trying to obey. I think he's uh, said it, getting a little stir crazy. He wants to get up and move again. But he's doing better. And so he's thankful for the prayers. Uh, and, and he just said, in addition, just to be praying for our country right now, he brought up that if God's people will humble themselves and call out to him, that he will heal their land and, and mm-hmm. ask that we be praying that. And amen. so, amen. Gary's an awesome brother. I love That's talking right. talking to him. That's right. He's got a great heart. Um, and then lastly, I want to uh, just mention my, uh, my Aunt Angie Griffiths um, again, that um, continue to pray for her. We got a little um, video uh, from her earlier where she was um, just giving us an update on, on where she was and, um, it's it's a struggle. Um, she's still dealing with her sciatic nerve pain, and um, we just want to we just want to pray that the Lord um, causes the uh, her the the procedures that they've done and everything to to kick in. Uh, she mentioned needing needing that to 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 kick in, and um, that that the Lord would just uh, ease that ease that pain that she's been dealing with for so long. So um, that's right. Continue to remember her. So before we do anything else, let's pray. Yeah. All right. Dear Lord, we are, uh, this is the second Wednesday in a row where we haven't met together as a body, and we are meeting online. Um, nevertheless, we're still united as one body, and one spirit, because of our one Lord, who is you, uh, who died to make us all all one body, all one family, God. And so we are sad to be apart, <clears throat> thankful. We're so, so very thankful to be in an age, to live in a time where we can communicate like this. So. And so I pray that all of us who are feeling separated and sad about that, that you will just encourage us with uh, this technology and, and the fun of that. But more than that, with the reality that we are together in spirit because of your Holy Spirit who has made us one. And so even as we get ready to worship now, that we will be able to rejoice that that we do have such a profound unity. God, we pray for 
I think we listed five requests just now of, of different people in our church, and that is just really, honestly, the tip of the iceberg of people who are suffering in different ways. Yeah. Um, several reports that I just gave, people have already found levels of relief, uh, still want more, still want healing. Uh, specifically, Angie has yeah. gotten uh, just just a little bit of pain relief, but not significant enough that she's still still having long, hard days. And so, God, we ask you to continue to be faithful and mm-hmm. um, to heal her there. And, and we're really looking forward to the time that she can just be back at church with really pain-free, God. Uh, right. I know it's, for her it's been so long that she probably can barely remember being pain-free, but you can, you can restore what has been taken away there, and that is what we ask for Angie. We look forward to uh, when this virus is done and we're all back together that uh, at the same time Angie will be back with us without any Amen. pain in that sciatic nerve. And, and so we're asking you to heal her and heal her quickly of that. Uh, thankful for what you've already done for Gary, and we're just thankful for Gary. What, just a constant encouragement. He, he loves you deeply, and he's so thankful for your salvation. And, God, I pray that you give all of us that spirit that Gary has, just Amen. overwhelmed by the fact that you saved us and you loved us and a desire That's to right. love people because you loved us, God. And I just, I'm just i so thankful for Gary and ask that you make me more like him in that way. Amen. Uh, thankful for, for Miss Debbie, uh, Miss Debbie Graves, and I pray for uh, for her mom and just as she's working with her and caring for her and Mary Ann Ray in the same position, caring for uh, the people you love is so difficult, God, and and especially as health begins to fail, and that is so, so, so hard. Mm-hmm. Um, so we ask for wisdom, and we'll talk about wisdom tonight, ask for a sense of peace, mm-hmm. and that sometimes hard decisions have to be made that you know they're right. We know they're the right decision, but that doesn't mean they're easy. Uh, there can even be feelings of guilt and sadness, even though that we know that it's what we're supposed to do. And I just pray that you'll take those away. Mm-hmm. Uh, allow them to rest in your great love and remember that, uh, that this, is, this is momentary, that we're That's looking right. for an eternity of delight and joy with you, God. And so allow sure. them to suffer well during this time. Um, with real grief and real sadness, but also with real hope and real joy. And that uh, even as we talked about last week, emotions can be uh, complex. We're not simple creatures. We're complex creatures. And allow them to feel the full breadth of those emotions, but not feel guilty as um, they wrestle through those, but just just to rest in your love and in your mercy, God. Um, God, I, I thank you for Connie. I, it, just even as she said that uh, her daughter is is feeling better and and that situation's mm-hmm. improving. We I know we're joining with Connie and saying thank you for that as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. As we turn now to sing to you and to study your word, I ask that this night will be an encouragement to every single one of us. That our song as we sing together will be a sound that we can't hear each other, but you can hear every single one of us. That's and right. I pray that this will be pleasing right. to your ears. This will be pleasing to your body, uh, and it will have long-lasting effects on our love for each other and our love for you. I pray that all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 All right. Let me get to a split screen here. There we go. What are we singing, Joel? Uh, You can switch it on to It Is Well. It should be that one up there. There you go. Scroll up. Now... Do you want to sing it first and you can tell, talk about it? Or you want to talk uh, well, about no, we'll it talk second? about it in a second. So for one thing, if you uh, tuned into uh, my little stream last night, I tried to play this and didn't do a great job with it because I couldn't remember the chords. But I got the chords in front of me now, and so it should be a little uh, more well executed. But um, I, love, I love thinking about this song and how it, um, it talks about really kind of in the first two verses, different trials that we go through. So it starts, when peace like a river attendeth my way. In other words, when, when, things, are going, uh, when things are going awesome, when things are going well in my life. Uh, but also, when sorrows like sea billows roll. 
Um, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. I think that's just talking about kind of general uh, trials that we walk through in this life. Um, and God teaches us in those moments to say, it is well with my soul. And then we get to the second verse and it says, though Satan should buffet, uh, and that's an old word, it's not the word buffet. Um, <laughs> it's uh, an old word buffet that uh, basically just means to strike repeatedly like a, like a wave crashing against a rock right. over and over again. And so even when Satan strikes repeatedly, um, and though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control. And where does he look to? Where does his eyes look to? His eyes look uh, to the cross. To, they look to, to what Jesus has done for us. That Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood uh, for my soul. And then that same thing in the third verse, really, just continuing to re reflect on the beauty of uh, on, on the cross, that, that all of our sin has been taken care of. Uh, that, that's ultimately the reason we can say, it is well with my soul. This is probably my favorite verse of the whole song. I like the poetry of all of it, but this one, man. And Lord, haste the day. So now we're saying, mm -hmm. Lord, we know you've already done great things for us, but we know that um, you still got a future of great things to do. And so we want that day to come. So we're saying, Lord, let it come. Come, Lord Jesus. Haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound. And the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. Um, those are the, the way these old hymns are written. They're awesome just, just reading them out loud. And the, the poetry and, their, their, um, and just their beauty and how they're written. Uh, but it's even better to sing them. And so uh, let's, let's sing this, this old song that most everybody should, should That's know. That's right. Sing it with us. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, what
We're kind of peeking out in there as we got loud, but uh, that's all right. Might have got distorted a little bit. I don't even pay attention well enough to notice that kind of stuff. It's all good. I was thinking about it just now. And I skipped a verse, too. Yeah. I skipped the Satan sh- the buffet verse. The buffet Satan verse. Satan should buff it. Um, I feel like there's a lot of jokes that we should be able to make between buffet and buffet. <laughs> we'll save them for another week. <laughs> this one, I just, as you were singing it, I kind of asked you to do it because it's going to fit with what we do tonight, but it sure does fit with what we did on Sunday morning too, doesn't it? Right. All right. Looking forward to that day when the trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Right, um, yeah. That's he's right. Com- he's coming again. That's right. He's coming again. Yeah. As Pastor Johnny says, there's a lot of things we debate about Revelation. Right. But two things that nobody debates, if you're a Christian, two things you believe is that he's coming back and we need to be ready. Right. Right. That's, that's the sure message. I'll tell you one other reason I asked you to sing it. And you mentioned it a little bit ago, but it's this little line right here. Thou hast taught me to say, yeah. it, is well, it is well with my soul. Um, in counseling recently, I've had people come to me who have been struggling with different areas in their life, and there's not a piece there, right? There's whatever trials they're walking through and it has brought heartache and discord and so i bring this song up to him i says well the christian worldview is captured by this song that the ability to say it as well with my soul is something that christ teaches us right it's not it's not actually the natural position of all men it's not we don't naturally go through trials in life and think you know what it's okay it is well with my soul Mm -hmm. this is something that we're trained in by Christ mm-hmm. as we walk with him for a lifetime. And that really is what we're going to talk about tonight is right. how a little bit, how is it that God equips us to be able to say what we looked at last week in James, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Right. Um, what, what teaches me to be able to say that? Or we could say it in, in the words of William Cooper, what teaches me to say it is well with my soul, mm. right? So that is, that's kind of our little lead in there. Let's check anything. Have we missed any comments we need to talk about? Um, you can do it while I'm pulling this up. Um, I believe Kathy Maxwell just mentioned um, praying for, for Richard uh, Maxwell. So we want to uh, mention that. And um, also, Danita said a blessing to hear uh, both of you sing this song. Thank you, dear, for your promise of this song you gave me and she's referring there to um she said she would like me to sing this song at her funeral (laughs) not that uh we want that to happen anytime soon but that's something i gotta i gotta keep tucked away that i i I promised her i would do that so um i kind of think it's a neat to some people it's morbid right but i think it's kind of neat to begin now thinking about what you want your funeral to be like and to live in a direction that says, when have you ever heard that old, I've heard a pastor say, live in a way that the pastor doesn't have to lie at your funeral. Right? <laughs> so start thinking now that one day you'll die, and you can live now so that at the end of your life, you're thankful and proud of the, of the life that you've lived before God. Right. And so it doesn't hurt us at all to start thinking through what, what, yeah. what songs, what verses, what truths do I want to mark my life and right. begin to live that way because Christians don't fear death also so it's not something that we should have to you know it shouldn't have to be this taboo for for Christians because uh, we know that Christ has defeated death and one day that that promise will be true in its fullest sense that uh, death where's your victory or uh, death where's your sting grave where's your victory uh, you know and so we don't fear death for that reason so that's right that, I know that's not even the passage we're going to talk about, but since you brought it up, <laughs> that passage says the sting 
of death is sin. And I remember the first time I realized that, that I'd always thought it was the other way around, that the sting of sin is death. What makes sin so bad? Mm. It's that it brings death. Mm. But Paul says it's actually the, the sting of death is sin. Mm. In other words, we're all going to die, but what makes that scary, what makes that painful, is when your sin is unaccounted That's for. Right. right. So if you can die and say, my sin has been paid for, mm-hmm. um, my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more, then you can say death doesn't have a sting. That's right. Because that sin has been taken away. Mm -hmm. Or that sting has been taken away when the sin was taken away. None of that's what we're going to study tonight. But hey, it's good stuff. Yeah. Good truth. Good. All right, so let's let's do, here's what we're going to do. Let me go ahead and pray before we study, and we're going to go through James chapter 1, and we're going to look at, uh, verses 5 through 8, but we, we started in verse 2 last week, and I'm just going to read 2 through 8 just to get our minds back on the context, okay. and then, then we'll pray, and we'll just chit-chat again. Awesome. Let me read it. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind, for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So let me pray. Mm. Dear Lord, we just ask as we try to unpack that. Um, And Joel and I discuss it together that you will give us true thinking, right thinking, give us clear conversation, both for our own sakes, but also for the sake of everyone listening. Um, We want the kind of wisdom that allows us to walk through this world uh, with joy. And so I ask that you give that to us tonight. I pray that in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. All right, Joel. Um, Just so y'all know, we, Joel and I probably spent... I don't know, several hours working through this today. Yeah. And you would think given that, what is it, three verses, five, six, seven, eight, four t- verses, mm-hmm. that it wouldn't have taken us as long. But we had a lot of fun talking about it. Yeah, if we can try to condense that all down now into right. uh, 20 or 30 minutes or so, that'd be, we'd be good. That's, that's actually one of our goals in this whole series that we're doing, is to allow the kind of fun that we have working through passages hopefully to come through here right. and just say the Bible is the Bible is good and fun. It's sweeter than honey, the drippings of the honeycomb. But it's, in my experience, I can say it's even more fun when it's shared with friends. Right. right? The yeah. Bible is, uh, is meant to be delighted in in a community. And so I really, I really have enjoyed it. But let's get right. through it. Um, let's start with an issue that's, just kind of an overall, before you look at the passage itself, some people think of James as having just a bunch of random topics, yeah. right? So that we talked about trials last week, but we're talking about uh, wisdom this week, and that each time is something new. And he I don't seem, really He seems to just kind of go from one topic to another, and there doesn't seem to be like a clear connection between right. what he says in this place and what he said right before that. And so... I'll just I'll just level with everybody and say that uh, this has been the way that I've been tempted personally to to read this to read the letter of James. It's hard to connect all the dots sometimes and and logically put together what he's saying. And so my my impression of it initially is to think he's just jumping from one topic to to another without any real connection between them. But Nathaniel has helped me see uh, some of the ways that. Um, no, there is a connection here, and this thought this thought builds on um, what he starts with. What he starts with now in verse five is now building on what came before in two through four. And that's, that's right. That's, that's right. Important. It's not always easy to see, but that's thinking right. about it, and I think that's the reason that um, you know it's it's written in such a way that you have to stop and think about it. You have to put on your thinking cap, as my old teachers used to say, um, and really give it some thought, and that's when. That's when the word kind of starts to open up and you marinate on it and it, and it, um, 
it's just it's just good. You get a better understanding. It is legitimately difficult because James has a different writing style than right. say Paul does. Right. So Paul's arguments are always very clear as far as one point leads to another. It's just the way Paul's mind works. Mm-hmm. I think James' mind works that way, except for he's. Some people argue he has a different style that's more Jewish than Paul's. Right. I don't know if that's true, if it's Jewish versus uh, Greek thinking, mm-hmm. but it just is a different way of structuring his arguments. So James starts out with a big point, and each point can stand on its own, but when you begin to put them all together, you see that in addition to the ability to stand on its own, they also tie into each other in a very right. interesting and helpful way. Right. It's, I think it's just very artistically done. Mm. Um, but anyway, it's all, well, you know what, it's almost like verses in a song where each verse can have its own right. power to it, but when you sing it all as a song together, you, you know that there's a, there's a, yeah, there's some glue that mm-hmm. holds it there. So I think that what we're getting ready to look at, five through eight, has that same kind of glue. And here's where I, I see it, really, is that verses two through four are going to give me this Christian way of living and viewing trials, right? So that as Christians, we should... Uh, well, we will face all kinds of trials, but as Christians, we should be able to do so with joy, right? And that as we meet those trials with joy, uh, those trials are producing in us a steadfastness. And we said last week that means it's drawing us tighter and holding us closer to Christ himself. That the more we walk right. through the trials of this life, the more cl- desperately we cling to God, we, we cry out to him. It actually grows us through these trials. And that that process leads to a kind of perfecting, a completing, uh, making us into the people God's made us to be. Right. Now, the reality is that everybody walks through trials, but that is not the experience that everybody has. Right? So... um, What do you mean? Everybody walks through them, but it's not the... Walking through them with joy is not the experience right, right, everybody right. has. So yeah. let, let's say this. Every single human who's ever been born has faced trials and tribulations. Right. right? There's never no exception. It's part of being born in a fallen world. Part of being born in a fallen world. However, not every human that experiences trials and tribulations meets those trials with joy right. that leads to steadfastness, right. that leads to being made mature and mm-hmm. complete and not lacking anything. Right. So what's the difference? Yeah. What is it that, what ingredient do I need in order for me to be able to meet my trials with joy? And it's, I think that's where five through eight is. It seems like the answer to that is something called wisdom. Something called wisdom, mm-hmm. right? So in the beginning of five, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously. And I think James is just saying, Listen, you may not be able to meet the joy, the trials you're going through today with joy. And if that's the case, it's probably because you don't have the wisdom to view your trials correctly. Right. Um, but don't despair. You can get that wisdom. Mm-hmm. Right? Don't despair. You can get it. If you lack the wisdom to face your trials with joy, ask God of that wisdom. Let me, add, let me mention real quick. There's different ways in Greek you can ask these questions. If you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Does that mean that some of us have the wisdom we need? That'd be one way somebody could be tempted to take it. You could, right? I do think in this case, if you assume that you have the wisdom you need, (laughs) you probably don't. Right. Right. It reminds me of the old humility joke, like the guy wears... The guy is such a humble person that he gets a a humility badge of honor. It's the most humble person ever. And then he wears the badge, and so they take it away from him. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. I'm so wise that I can face all my trials on my own strength. Then you don't have the wisdom you need to face it. Just like humility. In fact, probably for the same reason. Right, yeah. So the the point is we all need to realize we we don't have the wisdom that we need, the wisdom that's sufficient for, uh, for these things. And so... Uh, we all need this. To come at it with that attitude that we don't need it, uh, it just makes it clear that we yeah. do. So. so if you read verse 5 and you think, if any of you lacks wisdom and you thought, ooh, I know somebody who lacks wisdom, and it wasn't <laughs> so and you, so. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't you, then you, you're misreading it, right? right. The, it's assuming that you need some wisdom here. Yeah. Um, 
So let's see. Let me let me get here, make sure we don't miss anything there. But I think that's basically what we need. The first thing is, in order to face trials, the my, the big point to start us off with, in order to face trials, you need wisdom, mm-hmm. right? And and what I mean specifically, if if you want to face your trials with joy, you need wisdom. Right. Um, I didn't mention this earlier, but Miss Wanda Sue and I were talking. I guess it was on Sunday after after dinner about how there were trials that she faced in middle school and high school that at the time seemed really hard, Mm. but they just prepared her later to face trials that were harder and harder, and life seems to have been preparing her. Um, And so at any point in our life, we may not have the wisdom for the trial ahead, but God will give us the wisdom for that if we Mm -hmm. ask correctly, and then that might just right. give us the wisdom to handle something more and more throughout life. And that really is the Christian's idea. Of you are always lacking sufficient wisdom for all of the trials that can be thrown at you, but God will meet you with the wisdom you need if you ask correctly right. for the trials you're facing right now. Right. Um, That's good. All right, so here's the, here's the issue. Number one issue is you need wisdom mm-hmm. if you're going to face your trials. You don't have it on your mm-hmm. own, so you need to ask to receive it from God. So let's start with this idea that wisdom is something that must be received, mm-hmm. right? Um, Did you want to talk about, let's see, are you on point two right now? Wisdom yeah, must be received. Did you want to talk about the definition of wisdom? Let's do that before That's we probably get good. on. So um, talking about what wisdom is, if, if wisdom is something that obviously is something that we need, as James is talking about, then we should know um, what it is. And sometimes people will contrast wisdom and knowledge and I think there there is a real difference there between wisdom and knowledge because when you talk about somebody who's who's knowledgeable you're really just talking about kind of their um, maybe their their intellectual capacities or, or, or how many facts they know like somebody who uh, knows a lot about science or, or knows a lot about history or knows a lot about the Bible um, you know all these facts kind of built, built up, um, accumulated in their, in their head over a long period of time. They're a knowledgeable person, but having lots and lots of knowledge is, is different than, um, than being wise. And I've, I've, I've heard it explained this way, and I think it's the right way to think about it, that um, knowledge has to do with the, the, the facts that we know intellectually. Um, but wisdom is about being able to rightly apply the knowledge that we have. So you think about somebody. Actually, what I want to do is um, I'll, I'll I'll quote from a theologian named John Stott, and John Stott said this. He said, "If we say about someone he knows his Bible really well, so we're talking about somebody who knows the Bible really well. They can they can quote from it. They know all the facts about Old Testament history and who wrote what books and all this stuff. They might have lots and lots of knowledge about the Bible. If we say he knows his Bible really well." Uh, So far, we have described a knowledgeable person, but if he also knows how to use his Bible to understand life and the world around him and to guide his own conduct and the conduct of others in the maze of life's problems, then knowledge has passed over into wisdom. I think that's a good way of thinking about it, that, that, that wisdom is being able to rightly apply the knowledge that we have, particularly, I think, in our, in, in our case, what we're talking about here as, as Christians, particularly applying the knowledge of the Word. Um, you know, it reminds me of James saying, you know, don't just be a hearer of the Word, but be a doer also, um, to, to put these things into practice and to know how the Word applies in our everyday life. Um, that's... that's that's what we're talking about when we're talking about wisdom. And so um, just for fun, something funny I heard one time is that knowledge tells you that a tomato is a fruit. In case you didn't know that, that is technically true. A tomato is a fruit. Uh, knowledge tells you that, but wisdom tells you not to put it in fruit salad. So uh, I assume that would be pretty gross if you put tomato in, in fruit salad. But, um, but anyway, so Wisdom is being able to rightly right. apply the knowledge that you have. That's right. So the, the point, one of the important points there is that being wise and being smart aren't the exact same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So and then uh, I heard somebody say today that any teacher in America can tell you that, that they have right. very intelligent children yep. or maybe not children, young students, adults and their yeah. students in their class who are not 
wise, right? right? <laughs> so they know a ton of things, but they're making decisions mm -hmm. that are actually self-destructive in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying every smart person is not wise, but the, being smart and being wise are not the same thing. Right. Um, being wise has a sort of a, a moral component to it. It's the ability to apply the knowledge that you have in a way that causes you to flourish, or the people around you to flourish. It's, it's able to take your knowledge and apply. Okay, here's a, here's a way to think of it. Wisdom is living God's life in God's world, the God, way God God's wants me way, to live, God's, God's way. way in God's world. So how does God want me to live? And living that way in God's world, it's, it's recognizing that God structured the world in a certain way in order to cause us to flourish. And then we take those principles and we actually do them. Right. Right. So there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. They're not enemies. Right. They're not enemies. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But they're not the same either. Exactly. Okay. So here's where this is really important. Count it joy. In order for me to count it joy, I have to have and count it being my trials and, mm -hmm. and things I'm suffering. Yeah. In order to count those joy, I need wisdom, right? I need to know some things, but it's more than that. Yeah. I need to be able to take that knowledge and allow it to change the way I live, the way I think, the way I feel. Uh, and that wisdom doesn't mean just acquiring a bunch of information. Mm -hmm. It means having the right information, but having that information shape my thinking and my feeling and my acting. Mm -hmm. um, and to do that... That means I can't, I can't simply just have it, right? I have to receive it. So right. if you lack wisdom, the way to get it isn't by simply getting what's already in you yeah. and just and focusing on looking, what you already looking, have. You don't look in. Right, yeah. Uh, the way you get it is you receive something from outside, right? So that's the, really the next thing. If any of you acts, lacks wisdom... This, the next line there is, let him ask of God. If you're looking at the arc on this, on this left side, not that you have to know what all these lines mean, but there's a question uh, or a premise. You lack wisdom, and there's a response. What do you do in the case that you recognize you lack wisdom? You ask of God. And then uh, I said we might skip it, but let's, let's do this. The cool thing about God is that God is the one who gives wisdom, right? right? Yeah. So the point here is you're a receiver, right? God's the giver. If right. you want wisdom, biblical wisdom, true wisdom, it has to be received <laughs> yeah. from you. He has all wisdom. He so has all that's wisdom. that's where you look to for it, not uh, not to yourself. And the cool thing here, uh, Christy says, does that make ketchup a smoothie? <laughs> if a tomato is a fruit, it's ketchup. ketchup a smoothie. I like that. Um, right, so here's the cool thing on, on verse 5c there. I think it's cool. You, Joel, and me, Nathaniel, we lack wisdom. Mm -hmm. And to get it, we have to go to God and say, I don't understand. <laughs> right? I don't have the wisdom. And specifically in this context, it's saying, God, I'm suffering in some ways that mm -hmm. I just, I don't see how I could have joy in this situation. Right. right? So I've been brought through whatever trial, whether it be I'm dealing with cancer or my mom is dealing with mm -hmm. something or um, I've been locked in my house for coronavirus or whatever your trial is. Mm -hmm. He says, if you come to me and say, I can't find it in me to have joy, <laughs> right? I, right. I know the truth, but I just, I can't respond to this right. with joy. Here's the issue. You lack wisdom. Mm -hmm. You lack the ability to see your suffering from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. And do you know what God says? I'm not I'll angry about you, that, right. right? I don't. I don't reproach you for that. Right. If you come to me and ask for it, I'll give it generously. Yeah, he doesn't say, "Oh my gosh, how many times do I have to tell you? Um, how many times do I have to, you know, tell you what I've done for you, or or, or anything like that?" I mean, um, he knows we need wisdom, and I think he delights in. Well, he gives generously, and I think we could add he gives um, joyfully. Uh, to anybody who asks. And as you kind of communicated that, that perspective of somebody who's in the middle of a trial and they really just can't see uh, what the Lord's doing through it or how it could be possible for them to count it all joy, 
Um, there's nothing wrong with being honest with the Lord about those things. I think he loves it when we just lay our heart out there and just tell him exactly what we're thinking. Um, I think that ties in to, to what we're talking about here. If anybody lacks wisdom, sometimes it's frustrating to not have that wisdom. Tell the Lord that, you know, um, and we, we, we come to him not not in in anger, but we do come to him maybe uh, in in confusion and uncertainty and not not being able to figure things out ourselves. But we know he's the one who's got the answers. He's the one who's got the wisdom. And so, just lay it all out there. I really do believe the Lord just loves it when when we when we lay our heart bare uh, before him. You don't have to hide anything from him. The I guess Dorothy's at the age where I can still use her for examples and she won't know. But Dorothy's, oh, yeah, definitely. Dorothy's getting, she's in a stage right now where at night she's getting scared and she wants to keep coming out and getting extra hugs and she wants me to come sit with her and do these things. And part of that is her lack of maturity, right? I mean, she's a kid and she lacks the maturity and, and the wisdom. She lacks the knowledge. She knows that I'm in the next room. She knows that she's gone to sleep for six years and woke up and everything's been fine. She knows some things, but her feelings aren't quite there yet. And so every night she comes out, and I'll admit that I'm not as loving as God, because sometimes I say, Dorothy, you need to get in bed Mm -hmm. in firm ways, but I never begrudge her. Like the next morning, like that's what a a five-year-old does, and, Mm -hmm. and I have mercy and kindness. And Pastor Johnny said one time, he says, God calls himself our father and has mercy to us like a father has to his child, to his son. And he says, but it's like infinitely more, right? Yeah. right? So the distance in maturity mm-hmm. level between Dorothy and me right. is actually less than right. the distance between me and God. Infinitely less. Infinitely yeah. less. And so if I'm able to have mercy with Dorothy's immaturities, mm-hmm. how much more can God have mercy right. with my immaturities, That's with good. my lack of wisdom here? He says, good. He just wants me to come to him. He just wants me to ask, and he will generously, without reproach, give me mer- mm. wisdom, mm-hmm. the ability right. to see things from his perspective. Mm-hmm. Now, that said, there is a way to ask for wisdom that he does not accept, right? right? So all, not all requests for wisdom are actual requests for wisdom. Right. I want to explain this, but let me give you an example of how I think we already know it true. Mm-hmm. in our heart, but we need to work through why it is. But anybody who's ever been to college, or it's definitely in seminary, has you've experienced somebody raise their hand and ask a question to the teacher, and you know and everybody else in the room knows that's not really a question, <laughs> right? You're not trying to, they're not trying to get wisdom from the mm. teacher. They're trying to prove to the teacher that they know something, mm. Right, it's not a genuine request. And God's going to say this, that there is a way to ask God things that isn't in faith. It's, it's not a genuine request. And right. don't believe that those kind of fake requests are going to get you anywhere. Right. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right, so let's talk about that. If I want to get wisdom from God, what's the stipulation? How do I have to ask him? Verse 6, but let him ask in faith. With no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. So there's got to be real faith behind the question, and that was kind of a big part of our talk today. Is that's right. What all? What what that and what that what that means? Exactly. What exactly are we having faith in? What what am I supposed to believe? Mm-hmm. Um, so let. We'll, we'll kind of just see how this conversation okay. goes here. One of the places I think that's helpful to start is contrasting this idea of faith and doubting. And so I think that it's possible for people to read this and think faith means self-confidence. Like a, a, a very assured person has a lot of faith, and a person who has doubts about anything. If, if, you're, if you're timid about things, then you must, not, you must be doubting. Mm. Um, and I think there's some reason to think that that might not be the whole picture, or we need to we need to explain that a little bit better, mm. right? So, because on the front end of this, the reason I'm coming in the first place is because there's something I right, lack. Yeah, I lack wisdom. Right. I don't. I don't. I don't. Um, yeah. Right. The the very reason I'm coming to God is because I don't have, I have what that I need. Deficiency. I have that uncertainty. I have that. Um, you know. To you, if you want to call that a kind of doubt, I don't know if that's the right way to to call it, but there's. Um, 
there's definitely a recognition that, that we lack something. Right. So we're not, we're, we don't come self-assured um, right. in, in this because we lack wisdom. So, so we have to think faith and doubting is not the same as self-confidence and self-doubt, mm. right? What is it? Mm. I think, as I remember thinking back on our conversation, the conclusion we came to is that asking in faith means asking um, w- with the acknowledgement that, that, that God is the one who has wisdom and not us, um, that, that, that that's where wisdom is. And, right. and when we don't look to other sources uh, of wisdom, I think that's really the problem that, uh, that happens with this person who doubts is that they're looking to other sources of wisdom too. So they might kind of try out this, this whole look into God thing and we'll see what right. kind of wisdom he can offer me. But I might also, you know, listen to Oprah and, and her wisdom and the self-help books that I find in the store and listen to their wisdom. And I'm, I'm looking at all these other sources of wisdom and that turns me into that person who is like like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed uh, by the wind, by every uh, by every wind of doctrine, to 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 put it in uh, Paul's language from Ephesians, I believe. Um, and so, asking in faith means, God, you are the one who has wisdom. Nobody else has the wisdom, the kind of wisdom that I that I need right now. Um, and so, I'm looking to you to give that's that it. to me. I think that's exactly it. The person who goes to God to ask for wisdom has to believe that God is the ultimate source of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So whatever God says is wisdom. And whatever else I believe or think or feel or whatever the world says, that, if it's not in line with what God says, that's not wisdom. That's right. That's right. Right? So the faith here doesn't mean self-assurance. It really means a God assurance. I'm I'm really confident that what God is saying is right. Um, I heard one guy say that he, he thinks that this is a sort of, if, if you ask for God for wisdom, then you have to do what God says is wise, mm-hmm. right? And so if, you, if a guy prays because he wants God's wisdom, but he lives in a way that disregards God's instructions, then he'll never actually grow in God's wisdom. Right. And he applied this. He, says, he said, you can apply this in a million ways, but he says, he said, there's girls in his church. He says, ladies, if you are dating a guy who prays with you that he can have wisdom, and then he pressures you to have an inappropriate physical relationship, he says, he gave him permission to stop in the middle of the service and text that guy and say, we're breaking up today because <laughs> you are a double-minded man. You're right. unstable in all your ways yep. because you're asking, you're making a show of asking for wisdom. Right. But when God tells you, that sex is reserved for marriage, you say, well, that doesn't apply to me here. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, that's not a legitimate request yeah. for wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom means if God says this is wise, right. then he is the source of all wisdom, then he's wise. Right. It's a full... And if you act contrary to that, clearly yeah. you don't believe, uh, you know, his wisdom is very valuable. That's right. Um, and so, yeah. Right, so wisdom, so, seeking wisdom from God is a complete acknowledgement that I'm the one that lacks wisdom. Mm-hmm. He's the one that has wisdom. I'm going to him as the source of all wisdom, and I'm submitting all of my judgments about what's wise to him. Mm-hmm. Right? That I come as a receiver, and he's the giver, and I live in submission to his wisdom. Mm-hmm. But if you come thinking, eh, I'll, we'll see what God has to say, and we'll see what they have to say, and, and I'll pick right, yeah. the best scenario here. Mm-hmm. He says, well, then you will never become a person who is steadfast. Mm -hmm. You will never, you will always be pushed by whatever idea sounds most winsome to you at the time. And you will find yourself like a wave that's just pushed to and fro. Not only that, not only will you be unstable because of that, you won't get anything from the Lord. Now, I think this is really interesting. Where's that mouse at? Right? So Mm -hmm. he says, that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. What does anything refer to? What well, probably refers to wisdom, but it probably right. also refers to everything that God's giving me. Steadfastness, mm-hmm. perfection, complete, lacking mm-hmm. in nothing. All of those things that were coming out of my trials. Right. I won't get any of them. 
right. if I don't find God as my source of wisdom. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a big deal. Now, here's another area, Joel, that you and I kind of wrestled with here is sometimes this will get applied to things like picking a job. Yeah. Right? So imagine... You got several different job you offers. You got several different job offers, A couple offers, different right? job offers. You're trying to choose between, um, and you want wisdom for, for those kinds of decisions, right? That's right. And so um, how, does a, how does a passage like this uh, apply to that, uh, I guess? Very good. Very good question. And so here's where we, some of the things we have to kind of wrestle with is this, is this saying that if I really had faith, I would be able to pick the, between the two options, the two jobs in front of me, without any doubts mm. or without any hesitations, that I'll have absolute confidence in every decision mm. I make. And I don't think the context allows us to say that. Mm. Um, the context here is talking about when you meet trials, mm-hmm. in order for you to have joy in those trials, you need a certain, you just, you need wisdom. Right. Yeah. Right. And so it's saying that no matter what you suffer, what kind of trials you walk through, that God is offering you the wisdom that will allow you to have joy in it. And that Mm -hmm. comes by the knowledge, the factual knowledge that God's working all things together for good, but the application of that knowledge to our hearts and our lives, Mm -hmm. right? So it's not enough to know God works all things together. We have to feel it, right? We We have to be able to consider joy because God's working that through us. Mm. That's what, how wisdom applies it. Now that doesn't promise that we have all future knowledge so we know how right. any things will work out. Mm-hmm. All we can know is that whatever happens, whether I made the best choice or not the best choice in light of the information I had, that if I am seeking to glorify God and trusting mm-hmm. Him, if I'm loving Him, ultimately He's going to work it to good. Right. Right. Yeah. So I can, al- I can always rejoice in a dilemma. That doesn't mean I have absolute confidence that I'm always making right choices. That's not the kind of wisdom we're talking about. Mm. The wisdom I'm talking about is the wisdom that allows me to rejoice in every single trial I face. Right. Make sense? Yeah. So you still want to pray for wisdom even in those situations that aren't necessarily tied to, to trials necessarily, but, you know decisions about where to live or where to go to school or where to uh, or where to take a job you know you still want to pray for right. for wisdom um, but the application may be a little bit different um, in terms of what this passage is talking about so we I applied when Joel and I talked earlier I applied this to when I first came here this is six years ago I've been here at Rayford Road for six years now um, but at the time I had uh, right before I came, there were two different churches here at Rayford Road and another church in Virginia that had said, hey, we'd love for you to come be there. One was a, to be the pastor of a smaller church, a senior pastor of a smaller church in Virginia, and the other one was to work here. And we wrestled and wrestled with that decision, and both were things that I was really excited. I mean, either one of those had, were really exciting to me. I'm and really glad you came here, though. I am glad I came here. <laughs> at the time... I didn't realize how glad I would be, right? <laughs> right? right. And then I could only just imagine it. Mm-hmm. Now, since that time, we prayed about it, and I made a decision to go with this, and I just trusted. I, all I could do was say, God, whether I've had all the information, I made the right choice or not, at the end of the day, you're sovereign, you're in control, I'm going to trust you to bless this. So I couldn't at that moment say, there's no chance that I've ma- made a mistake right. or made an error there. Yeah. Now, in hindsight, uh, all the different things that we've walked through in life, we've seen that God has provided for us in ways we didn't even know we needed. Right. Right? So right. was God moving in that? Did God give me a wisdom that I didn't even realize I had? I Absolutely. Think, I think yeah. he did. But the promise that this passage made wasn't that I could never make a wrong decision again. Mm. Right? It wasn't that if you ask God, you'll never make bad decisions. The promise is that no matter what I go through, if I ask God for wisdom, that I can face these trials or decisions or anything with joy, knowing that God himself is acting uh, through me and in me and around me to work everything together for my good and for the good of those around me, for the, for the glory of his kingdom. All right. 
So at the end of the day, this decision, while it was serious and I had to pray about it and think about it, I could also go to bed, sleep, rest, and trust God's got this. Right. Because ultimately, he's the one that works all things together for good. That's right. And I think that was how wisdom worked out. It's, it's not a promise for absolute certainty. It's not a promise for uh, uh, I will never make a wrong choice again. It's, it's not that. It's a promise that I can have joy no matter what circumstance I'm in mm -hmm. because he is working everything together to make me mature and complete yeah. and steadfast. I can't think of another promise in Scripture that's just more foundational and probably the one that um, should, I mean, I can't think of one that should be remembered more by a Christian than this, that promise that r really and truly all things God is working through. Um, all things work together for good yep. for those who, who love him and are called according to his purpose. Isn't, isn't that relieving? Yeah. Isn't that relieving? Yeah. Look, we've we've filled up our whole time here. Holy cow, it's eight o'clock. Um, and we're gonna sing another song. But so let me let me wrap this up and let's let's apply it really quickly. Okay. We are living in a time that we just don't understand why why do viruses like this happen? I mean, and we know the fall causes it and I mean, we know some of the reasons, but what is God doing? What is God doing in Rayford Road Church right now? What is God doing in churches all across the world? I don't know everything that God's right. doing. Yeah. And so this passage is asking me to not freak out, right? Mm -hmm. so you said you can face trials of all kinds and live with joy. Now, not because you have joy in you or you have enough wisdom or knowledge or that you know everything, but you can ask God to tell you who he is and what he's going to do in a way that will give you the ability just to trust him, just right. to receive that. It'll give you joy. Now, if I ask in a way, this is God giving me joy, but I'm not going to follow you or obey you. If, if I'm not actually fully trusting him, I don't get that joy. Mm -hmm. But if, if I ask him to give to apply the knowledge of his sovereignty to my heart mm -hmm. he will do that for me allow me to lay my head on the pillow at night in peace not because i'm perfect but because he is right that's that's, right. that's good news yeah. for right now for all time but no doubt right about now. It. so yeah. let's let's pray um that's right karen god is in control god is in control uh let's see let me pull up we're going to sing another of my favorite songs. There is a fountain filled with blood. Mike Sue Combs says this was just what I needed tonight. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Thank you.
faith I saw the stream Thy flowing wounds supply Redeeming love has been my theme And shall be till I die And shall be till I die you pray for us all right let's pray everybody it's been good to be here um, thank you all for coming and we'll I'll pray us out right now father we just thank you for this time we thank you for your word thank you for time uh, that me and Nathaniel are just able to spend uh, today talking about your word and talking through things um, challenging each other father hopefully uh, sharpening each other and I just pray um, I pray now for everybody who has watched this stream and everybody who may still be here uh, praying with us Father we're in our, in our different places um, most of us are stuck at home and uh, Father I just pray that this would be a time of refreshing for our souls even as we look out at the the panic and the concern that's going on around us Father uh, we don't want to be a people that's that's marked by those things we don't fear uh, we don't panic. We look to you. We trust in you. Um, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. And so, Father, we just uh, we declare that together again tonight. And so we, f we thank you for this time we've, we've had singing. We thank you for this time in your word. And, Father, I just pray that we would be a people of your word always, uh, that there would be nothing we delight to do more uh, than worshiping you um, by, by singing as you co you've commanded us to do and also by looking at your word together and talking about it. And so I pray that we would be a people during these days that are, that are marked by those things. And so, um, Father, we look to you, we love you, we thank you for everything you've done for us through Jesus, and we pray all of these things in his name. Amen. Amen. Right, Everybody, we thank you. Good to be here. We thank you. This has been George and Kara, Krista, Karen. Good night to y'all. Love you. Good, good. All right, guys, we're going to shut it on down. Uh, hey, before I do shut it down, keep letting us know if there's any prayer requests. I've actually Please. had uh, some people contact me today. Uh, we've actually had multiple people say that if there are special needs that we need as a body, uh, that people want to be able to help each other. So if you know of things that you need us to know about, please let us know. Sometimes pastors are the last people to find out things, uh, and, and not out of any ill intention, but there's people that want to help. So let us know right. if we can be of a help to you. Right. We love you guys. We're praying for you and looking forward to being back together soon. All right, night.